Tony, it's been 20 years since we made this film and 20 years since we met. Yes. What are your memories? I can't remember much about the film. Um, the riding bits, the bikes, uh, the friends, yes. The actual times I can remember a bit about, but um, a lot of it's uh, gone. There was definitely a bad accident, I mean, a serious accident, every week. Um, and then at least once a month or every third week, somebody died. Uh, people lost their legs, arms, um, completely paralysed, whatever, you know. I mean, there was 500 of us to start off with. Um, and when I left, I think it was down to about sort of, you know, 300. A summer evening, June 1968, Camberley, Surrey, in the heart of the respectable home counties. A crowd of teenage motorcycle enthusiasts meet as usual. They're not organised enough to be called a club or a gang. We're trying to get along with everybody else, but the other people, they don't want us. On the move from a world that rejects them, they ride the endless circuit from cafe to cafe. You don't do nothing wrong, they just look at you and say, get out. An adolescent frustration and embittered outlook is often expressed in violence. And you can't just stand there. You've got to go somewhere, and something's going to happen. They call the law in, it's punch up, things like that, you know. They just all blame us for nothing. These powerful machines can be dangerous. Through a year, what casualties will a group like this encounter, whether they be in conflict with the law, with serious injury, or with death? blame these people causing trouble because we're going to get blamed for it anyway so why not cause it that's why I look at it so says Tony Cripps 19 unemployed he is also banned from riding his 500 cc motorbike an injustice he feels imposed by a conformist society well I like to see myself just sort of having nobody to tell me what to do sort of my own boss and just go just where I want and when I please and do what I want and that's it that's about it I think Early morning, September 1968, bank holiday. The crowd are getting ready to go down to the coast. This year, they pick on Hailing Island in Hampshire. Those like Tony, who are banned from riding their motorcycles, share a friend's clapped out motor car. Others, due to earlier forays, are forced to remain behind. Hey, what happened to you then? Hey? What happened to me? What happened to you? My leg, it's full, pulled across in front of me. Well, usual <laughs> lorry drivers, you know. I lost my license. They got me. <laughs> got three months, three weeks, and seven quid fine. I wasn't bad the fine, but not like three months. Where are you up to? Hayley. Most of them's gone down there last night. You go down there and meet them. There's pretty, yeah, quite a few of them. Stay at home, I think. Step on my blue suede shoes. Well, you can do anything. Well, if somebody called me a yob, I would say to him, yeah, it's right, you know, I do look, look like a yob, but then I'm not worried what they think. To me, I look like what I am. Uh, I left school at 15, and I went straight as an apprentice electrician. I only had, what, two days off. Broke up, two days later I was working, I think. I was really pleased with school, you know. I mean, I, the only thing I was good at at school was maths. I used to ask for extra homework and things like that. But, they, you know, they weren't worried. They didn't sort of help. They was worrying more about the way I dressed and my hair than it was what I'd done at school, you know, me work and that. That's a bit I can understand. If I saw something and I couldn't afford it, I don't think I would steal it. Because I find that if I did nick something, 
As the law is against us all, all the time, they don't make it worse. I think I respect the regulation about drugs. I'm, I'm against taking drugs. I mean, I don't even like taking aspirins. I believe in religion up to a certain extent, but I, I don't go to church. I've never been in church in my life, only except for a wedding or, or funeral or something like that. But I wouldn't sort of put myself out to go to church or anything like that. My dad, you know, he's in the army for a long time, so he's real strict and that, and you can't talk to him. They arrive on the south coast to find that for one of their group, trouble has already started. Oh, he's coming up to this corner, doing about 50, shut down. And he went about 30 when we ran it. Yeah, and the back slid away. Just, the back just broke. I, try, I could see we were going. I just tried to pull it, pull it out a little bit, and it just wouldn't go. It was just only he went down one way on the bike, and I went down the other way on my ass. And it was two skid marks. <laughs> show him your back, please. Show him your back. No, not really. Show him your back. Let's have a look at your back. Go on, please. Show him your back. <laughs> look at that. Look at that. For Dr. Kill there. For Dr. Kill there. There it is. Treasure that for life. Oh. Show him your ass, Tex. If it ain't put me off riding, that's for sure. Every time you pack up drives when you get killed, isn't it? You go through two both legs or an arm or something like that. <laughs> then you kill yourself anyway. Every time you stop riding, it's when you can't ride anymore. Yeah. Well, you put it at our age, if you smash your leg off, the first thing you do is get to a bridge and jump off, in it? Because you want to go through life without a leg. I don't know how many crashes I've had. I, I've only had one with another car. But uh, as for just coming off, I've done it so many times, I don't know. That give you a thrill riding it. Just that, that little small scene. Look at half these cars. Hardly any cars. These cars will burn me off, will they? You get these flash boys, don't you, in their little old minis. I can't I want to even do about 40. They come revving up, don't they? All you have to do is just, you're just away, aren't you? Just left them like that. The now familiar bank holiday headlines appear. On a day when news is usually slack, the rocker's antics become of national importance. In fact, today, only one incident warranted police action. When you walk in a posh restaurant, everyone looks around, looks around at you, and they're expecting you to do something, like spit on the floor or something. So you do it, just for the crack, like. <laughs> just so you don't disappoint them. <laughs> they ask for it, so we give it to them. Yeah. You know, they things like that. just sort of look at you, just make a crack about them. We look stupid to them, and they look stupid to us. So we think they're just plastic people. <laughs> We're just living free, really, I mean. <laughs> Judy is my girlfriend. She's sort of different from most girls, you know, who I've been out with. And, well, I just like being with her, you know. I'm going out with her for four months and nearly three weeks. We're supposed to be getting engaged next week. Supposed to be. <laughs> oh, Judy, she's 15, nearly 16. I think she's finished school now. You know, I don't ask her much because she keeps getting in bad moods. <laughs> she don't like being told what to do, you know. But if we're just me and her on her own, we're all right. Nothing goes wrong, you know, we have a good laugh and that. Then if I say anything, you know, to her, she gets this in a bad mood and that's it. Well, we finished today, actually. And she goes, right, here's a chain back, finished. I haven't given this chain to any other girl. You know, it's a frippy bit with the back cut out and a whole... You know, I've had it all my life, see? And it's a sort of sentimental value to me. Well, I used to wear it and she just wanted it, so I let her, you know, wear it like... Until we finish, and every time we finish, she gives it back. <laughs> but a couple of other girls have asked me, but I wouldn't let them, you know. Judy is the first one. Well, unless I get serious again, you know. Late September, a motorcycle skids on a wet patch and collides with a car. It was ridden by 19-year-old Keith Cole. The boy is killed, so is the driver of the car. Really ride a bike like, you know, it's, you know, everybody takes chances on a motorbike. And, you know, it's a real pleasure to watch a bloke like that ride, you know, he's more of an artist, really, like. Uh, yeah, yeah, another chap was killed, a 55-year-old chap. So he was coming over work, like, and the road was wet. He just hit the water, just went across the road into the path of the other car. There's nothing left of the car at all. You know, you always think, well, I might be the next one to go, but it's this sort of thing you've got to just put up with, you know, hope for your sake that it isn't. No, it hadn't put me off riding. I don't think anything like that ever will. Well, I think about... Seven or eight my mates have killed themselves this year. Well, since about last December. Moved on by the police, a hundred rockers drive off to their friend's funeral. There's no point in going to his funeral like in suits, is there? You've got to go as he knew you, sort of thing, isn't it? You know, as if he was there. Sort of thing. You see what I mean? You know, he's a good mate, never done anybody any harm or anything. You know, I just, I just can't believe it. You know, you, you don't sort of miss them until they're actually gone, like, you know. 
It's hard to believe. It worries me, but I wouldn't sort of stop riding if you get me licensed back on the 19th, well, midnight, Thursday. I'm riding my bike on the, on the dead on the hour, you know, midnight. Well, I don't think I'd go on a burn up because my bike makes, you know, quite a bit of noise. And at that time of night, all the coppers are after you all the time, you know. You can't go too far without getting stopped by a copper at night. However, Tony's friend Bill was stopped by the police a few days later. I was coming along and I already burst two tyres that night and I burst another one and the car was going bang, bop, bang, <laughs> <laughs> all down the road. <laughs> and this, this Cortina saw us and pulled us in. So I got someone's no licence, driving with defective tyres and driving carelessly or dangerously, I don't know. It's not the first time I've done it. Very first time I went, I got an endorsement and a £10 pound fine. Second time I got an endorsement and a £12 pound fine and I spent a letter still. Third time I went and got disqualified for 18 months. Fourth time I didn't go. Fifth time I didn't go. Sixth time I didn't go. And I didn't go last time. <laughs> I'll probably get an heavy fine tomorrow. But I can ask for time, can't I? I'll just lay it on a bit, make it a bit thick. And I should get away with it. If I say, how, come, how much can you afford a week? I'll say two pound. And if I don't agree, I'll just say, well, three pound. <laughs> if I don't agree, I'll say, oh, how long will you give me? <laughs> he received, in fact, a three year suspended prison sentence a seven-year riding ban, and a £175 fine. Tony, on the other hand, gets his licence back. Um, I'd love to go on a bike now. Um, I feel the cold a bit more than I did then. <laughs> uh, I, and the other thing is, I know that I had a crash helmet on a lot in the film, but it was very rarely I wore a crash helmet. Um, same with seat belts. I don't believe in seat belts. Tony's father... 79-year-old Mr. Cripps. I don't worry much about him, you know. No, I, he talks to his mother more than he do me. Once or twice, you know, I said, if you don't buck your ideas, I should give the order of the boot out of here, see? Nothing he's done anything wrong, but it's just that he doesn't suit my way of going on. You see, I like to see his shoes clean, and I like to see him... Well, in my time, your hair was cut. You see, I'm getting on to him because I've been a military man all my life. You see, when you finish up Bond Officer Class 1, Mechanist Sound Major, well, you tell people what to do and expect it done in my time there to do it. I've got nothing against him, really. Providing he don't get in these gangs that go down the coast upsetting the people that, you know, visitors. He's never been into trouble, up to my knowledge, mind you. And I've never had the police here with him. Because I was in the army from, what, day one I was born. I mean, I was on parade, more or less, 24 hours a day. I mean, they think they got it rough in the army, but... Yeah, they only get the couple of hours in the morning, that's it. I was 24 hours a day, and it was hard going. <laughs> so as soon as I got old, well, big enough, um, I rebelled. I mean, I don't get up till about one, two, three o'clock in the afternoon. No, because if I do, he only starts moaning, because you know, I'll, I'll do my bike up or something, do a bit to my bike. And he only starts moaning about that, you know, so... I don't bother about getting up. I'll stay in bed till about two. Then I'll come down. That's that in the week, get washed and changed and that. And uh, I go down to the old manor, you know, and staying about there till the boys come down at night. He's in bed till two or three. I calls him up for his dinner and he comes and has his dinner. He's, he always says, can I have a clean shirt on? I said, there it is, all ready for you. And you have a bath, it's all ready for you. But um, I worry about him now. And especially if he don't come in at one, you know, I thought, oh, goodness, I wonder what happened to him now. Because he said, I don't worry, he said. Oh, he, he's not frightened of death. Well, yeah, I'm happy, I think. You know, I've... Sometimes I get a bit bored, you know, I feel like miserable. So, you know, well, quite a lot of times I'm miserable, you know, I just feel depressed and that. I mean, that's only because my bike's off the road, you know. I mean, once I got my bike, I'm all right. You know, when I'm riding my bike, I'm not worried. I, I mean, you can do what you want, you can go anywhere, you know, you've got the transport and that, and I mean, just riding around in circles is good enough, you know. It's just something, you know, you get on the bike and that's it. It just sort of takes hold of you, sort of thing, you know. Or you just get on it and just keep riding. It makes me happy. It's the worst thing they've ever done when they've done away with the uh, National Service. They've been no longer here then. That two to three years sold in for everybody. They're not little angels, but they're average lads. I mean, they're apprenticed engineers, apprentice bricklayers, they're working motorbike shops, garages, they're average kids. 
So says the man who should know, the manager of the cafe where the Camberley rockers while away their time. <laughs> if they do wrong, I punish them for it. In a way, I borrow them from the cafe. These lads, the average laddie in this cafe, they might get involved in crime as regards speeding or motorbike offences, and anything to do with a bike, yes. But actual stealing, robbing and knocking people out, no, not, not that sort of crime. They're not um, fighters and... Oh, knifing gangs and all that. I've yet to see a knife on them. You can't go, they can't go into certain pubs because they wear a leather jacket. Take the leather jacket off, then go in the pub. Does it make them bloody different? I can't help it. I mean, I might as well stand on the door and say, take your jacket off, then you can come in. Load of hooey. Some of them have not got a good home life, you know, and they've told me little things, tried to help them imagine they're my daughters. And just tell them, you know, treat me as their mum. Some of them do, some of them don't. When I went down to the police station, there was a sergeant there. Then he started coming nasty. Then he asked me my name, because it's Tony. And he said, was it Tony or Anthony? And I said, I don't know. He goes, well, you must know it's your name. I goes, well, I don't. Because a bloke never enough of being bloody picked on. So he started coming funny. Then he said, what's on your birth certificate? I goes, I don't know. No, he goes, what was your christen? I said, I haven't got a clue, you know. I don't know. He goes, you must do. I goes, look, mate. I said, I ain't even seen my birth certificate. So how the bloody how do I know? I goes, as far as I know, I might, you know, I haven't got one. And I walked out and slammed the door. <laughs> December 1968. Tony decides to return to work on the new university site at Guildford. Well, I decided to come back to work, you know, because I was bored stiff. And I had to get some money in that. You know, it was getting near Christmas and uh, I had to get some clothes and this and that. I got my bike on the road, so I had to get some money, you know, keep it going and get tax insurance and everything. National Health people, they, well, there was a part of me coming back to work as well, because they said, they used to come around me house trying to get me in, but I was never in. And they said if they come around once more, I wasn't in, they was going to stop the money. And they started moaning about the couple of quid I was getting, you know, I, I thought, blow it. They're going to moan about a couple of quid, I'm going back to work. Uh, I've saved the five out of the first wages, because I've only had one week's wages so far. I pay three quid to me mum for the run in the house and that. You know, personally, I think it's, you know, too much, really, for what I get. Because I'm never there, and uh, I get all my meals at over Judy's place now. I think since we've been on our own, we've been much better. We was always arguing, and since we've been on our own, we haven't argued too much. And when we do argue, we know that it's something that the other person's done. And it's just between Judy and me and no nobody else, you know. There's always someone been trying to split us up. Either one to go out with me or one to go out with Judy. But now it's different, you know. She's nearly 16, she'll be 16 in December. I think I'll try and get engaged on her birthday. If I get some money, I think it would make a nice birthday present. Well, my daddy, when we, when I started back to work, you know, he seemed pleased about it and that. And, you know, he moans if I have time off and that, but. You know, you still don't get on too good with him. He's always moaning and that. About this and that, you know, I can't do anything right yet. Christmas 1968, a rockers party. A visitor might be excused for thinking he'd slipped back 10 years in time. The jukebox hammers out rock and roll favorites of the 1950s. In fact, these teenagers do live almost entirely in the past. They talk endlessly of the good burn-ups they've had. They recall spectacular accidents with a fond nostalgia. Nobody mentions tomorrow, and next week is the distant future. When they speak of matters beyond their own immediate range of vision, they do little more than echo the views of their parents, or the easily assimilated opinions of bigotry and intolerance. I mean, people moan about us, because we've got leather jackets on and that. They've got yellow socks, bloody pink, bloody jumpers, and uh, striped jackets and purple trousers and do they start thinking they're it you know they start making trouble so we have to sort of show them who's boss like i hate moddy boys more than coppers i mean well you get these coppers they're all we call them is lice off of the working class that's all they are and you'll find there's one law for the rich and one for the poor i mean if you've got money you come from a high class background if you do something wrong then the police nine times out of ten will forget it um, i know i'm ignorant and that, I'd rather be ignorant, I'm a working class, I'm ignorant, and I'm glad I am. I don't reckon anybody can have any sort of ambition living in a country like this. It's going to be a police state before long. Uh, I wouldn't mind going abroad, actually. 
you know, to like, emigrate to Australia, possibly. You won't find many colour boys with motorbikes, that's one thing. I've got nothing against them, I just don't like them. I mean, I, I wouldn't go around um, beating them up, but I just don't like them. I mean, they're over here, they're, they're taking jobs, you know what I mean? I mean, it's just paying there all these go. people in the National Assistance yeah, queue, right. isn't it? I've never voted, but I'm old enough now, and I'm voting Conservative. I reckon Wilson is one of the worst blokes in this country, I reckon. He's done this country something chronic. <laughs> It was a lot better then than it is now. It's not England anymore, it won't be soon. Um, and it's very multiracial. Well, I can't see how it can be my fault. This bloody silly can of mini pulled out in front of me. Well, she thinks it's my fault, the woman I hit. I know what she's bloody done. Smashed me bloody headlight, look. Bloody thing. There's a new bloody headlight, you know. And look at this. New bloody gearbox. And what's happened, look. January the 25th, bloody 1969. Tony wrecks his bike but luckily not himself or anyone else. However, for him, it is stark tragedy. Look, I've just got back on the road, got my license back, comes back on the road, makes you bloody mad, it does. Besides this, Tony has walked out of his parents' home. He says never to return. I didn't sort of walk out, you know. I just sort of stayed out a few nights, you know, and they got a sort of more on that. Mind you, my dad's much better now since I left home. My mum, I th my mum likes me there, you know. She, I think she misses me. I mean, the old man does, because he's got nobody to moan at now, see? He told me that, you know, after a couple... Well, well, I didn't go there over Christmas, see, you know. So I think it was after, No, I went there after Christmas, just one day, you know. And that was it, all, you know, all the weeks I had off, like, I went there one day. And he just turned around and he said, he goes... He you know, half miss you, he said, because there's nobody to moan at. I thought, well, that's nice, I suppose, you know. <laughs> so he does miss me in a way. And how's he getting on with his girlfriend, Judy? You know, we, we get all right, I suppose. Still have arguments, you know, but, you know, not so many now. <laughs> uh, I think her mum knows about us. I think she does. Her dad doesn't know. <laughs> well, we haven't told him yet, well, because he think he, you know, he might not let us, like, so... We're going to make it official soon, you know, I'm going to sort of get the courage up to tell him soon, you know. <laughs> and uh, we'll try and make it official. Oh, he went serious, and after about three weeks, it finished. And he said that he wouldn't get tied down again. Well, we hope to get married, you know, so about a couple of years' time, so, you know. I'm going to try and buy a caravan off Judy's brother, get his caravan, because he's moving into our house soon, see? It'll be about six weeks. I want to get his caravan. It's only across the road, you know. That won't be too bad. I said that it wasn't worth it carrying on if you keep finishing it, so he said, oh, well, Oh, we'll see what we can do, you know, go steady. And he said, if it finishes, uh, we won't go back out at each other. And I said, yeah, all right. And it's just carried on ever since. Well, we're collecting tanners. We've got about £2.7 or something like that in tanners, you know. That's since Christmas, so that's not too bad. Without Judy's parents, I think they, you know, it's all like me. I don't know if they've got anything against me, you know. I think I get on better with them than I do my own parents. Well, my dad. Although outward appearances suggest that Tony is still the same, by April 1969, the hostile rebel of the previous summer has undergone a considerable change. The aimlessness of 1968 has retreated before a need to settle down, and he's got as far as buying property. Well, I had to pay, to start off with, about 350 but, you know, there's a few things I want doing, and uh, he knocked it down to 330 and I've paid him 65 altogether so far. There's another 265 to go. So I have to get it paid off in a year, you know. Paying a fiver a week. It's not too bad. But I reckon I'll be able to make enough to, you know, afford to be married. I mean, if I can't, I will send the missus out to work. <laughs> well, I just want to be sort of happy and have a good life. That's what I'm worried about, you know. I do like to stroll along the brum, 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 where the brass band play tiddly om, pom, pom. So just let me be beside the seaside, then I'll be beside myself with glee. 
And so to another bank holiday rave up, Whitson, 1969. This time, Tony opts out. The reason? He wants to stay out of trouble. So they arrive uninvited in Swanage, two groups from Camberley and Reading, linked together for the day by the Rocker Fraternity. <laughs> What is the attraction for them in a conservative, respectable town like Swanage? We come down here for a laugh because we, the police don't bug us too much down here. We can get away, get away with stomping and raving and drinking. I mean, we can do what we like and nobody bugs us, nobody does nothing to us, it's provided we keep ourselves to ourselves, which is what we try to do. But they come along and they start saying, no, you're going to do this and you're going to do that, so that we let them have it. That's, that's the way it goes. You know? Well, I mean, normally you go anywhere, any, anywhere on the coast, and if there's more than about four of you, at all, especially if you've got long hair and wearing leather jackets on it. What are you doing? Why are you here? Down the neck. Before you even start. I tell you what, they were going to put roadblocks up for us this year. The only way we can get into well, they, town they when we haven't got roadblocks up is to say we're coming to see someone. We Matt made Ian your... Matt here said so we could come to see him. That would get us through the roadblock. What it is, we're living in their world and we don't like it. We want to change it. And the only way we can change it is by rearing up at them. I mean, we can't change it by talk or anything because they won't listen. We're not old enough and we're not sensible enough. So all you got to do is make them feel real, feel real sick with you. I wasn't there, but I had the police around to me. I was nearly arrested for it. I had two plain clothes banging on the, the door quite late at night, saying that I planned it all and I was there and I caused it and everything else. And I was, you know, sort of nowhere near, didn't even go. <laughs> I mean, you wait all year to get two weeks off work and you go straight down the coast and have a good old punch. I mean, what fun's that? And so, the inevitable headlines. From what I read in the newspapers, uh, as far as the fight was concerned, it, you know, I don't think it was a fair write-up. Well, it's obvious, isn't it? Newspapers get a story. People like to read about us because they hate us. They like to see <clears throat> that we've been doing wrong, proves them right. But they just blow up what happened. There, there was one incident in the bar that night. That was caused by a local lad. And we get the blame for it. We get jeered at. The papers like it. It's a good story for them. People want to read about it. We didn't go there... Uh, Deliberately, you no know, cause trouble. But it wouldn't have made any difference if the press, the telly, or anyone had been down there. It would have started anyway. I think the papers definitely blew it up, made it sound a lot more important than it was. Obviously, we can't help bumping into people and that, and we occasionally get a little trouble then. This bloke Eddie came across, took his jacket off, and said that he'd take all of us on at once, which I didn't doubt for a minute. And um, all the oldies, that is everyone over 30. They all gathered round this square and all watched, and not one of us moved. And this Eddie kept, kept his threats up. All the oldies round, they all clapped. 
people clapped and cheered. They loved it. We were like beaten dogs. They wanted to see violence and bloodshed. They were quite disappointed in a while, I think, but they liked to see us done down. Well, I got the caravan. Well, that's the only thing I wanted, really, you know. So I'm pretty happy with it. I'm well, really happy, you know. Oh, you know, one night I'm, say, painting, you know, I'm painting now, you know. Do the inside one night, and if it's a nice night, I'll go out and do a bit of gardening, you know. I, mean, well, I used to hate gardening at home, but now I really enjoy it, you know. I'm going to really make it look smart, sort of thing, you know. You know, sort of a rockery and archway full of roses and all that, you know. You know it's just that people come in, you know, I mean, we're not, they must have had a horrible first impression of me, you know, it's all scrappy there, you know. And they think, oh, Christ, what have we got living next door to us, you know. All them rockers, them layabouts and them yobbos and all things like that, you know. So I want to sort of change that, that impression, you know. I want to... So when they sort of see the garden, they say, well, he ain't too bad, he's trying, you know. And the only way you can do it is just by keeping out of trouble. And if, well, just just mind your own business. That, that's the main thing. You know, I'll get settled down and that. You know, I'm looking forward to getting married. I don't care what anybody says. I mean, you always get married people saying, oh, Christ, the biggest mistake, like, you know. But, I mean, well, I can't see nothing wrong with it. I mean, I'm not married yet, but, you know, I just can't, I don't know, you can beat it myself, what I've seen of it, you know. I mean, you come home from work, I mean, your dinner's there, there's no worries about cooking it, you know. I and mean, all the place is tidy and that, and, well, you know, it's, I don't know, you can beat it, really. If I wanted to change it, the image, like, Probably will. I mean, you know, it just makes me sick, really, because, you know, people are always there, always moaning, always minding your business instead of their own, you know. I mean, they say, oh, do you know he's having trouble paying this? Do you know he's having trouble paying that? And they're all up to, you know, in debt up their eyeballs anyway. It's the same, anyway. It never changed, you know. I mean, I don't know what the future's going to bring up for me, you know. I hope it's the same way. I hope I stay like this. And personally, I couldn't care too much what anybody thinks of me, you know, so. That's it, sort of thing. Well, five weeks later, Tony Cripps had his hair cut. Why? Trying to be respectful or something? <laughs> no, it was just I felt like doing it. Um, I just woke up one morning and thought, I'm going to get my hair cut, so I did. Nothing to do with being respectable or anything like that. I tend to get it cut a bit more regular now than I used to, especially if I'm busy. Uh, if I've got a, a big job to go to, you know, a new customer, and then if I remember about getting my hair cut, I get my hair cut. Um, that's for period's sake. <laughs> what do you do? I do, I install burger. I've got my own burger alarm business, and I'm also in the leisure industry, you know, uh, fruit machines, jukeboxes, uh, videos, pool tables. Um, Isn't that all gangsterism? It used to be. It's it's quite a respectable business now. <laughs> Did you think you were watching a stranger? Yes. <laughs> uh, well, say yes. Um, I can still see a lot of me in in that person. Uh, I still have got a lot of the same thoughts, um, but just the looks really. We left you at the end of the film, uh, having cut your hair, determined to set off on a career, and you were working in electrical mm. business. What happened after that? I, well, I started my own business up. Um, How soon after we left you? Straight away, it's when I had my hair cut. Not because I started my own business up, mind you. But I got my hair cut, and then, and then straight away after, I thought I'd start my own business up. <laughs> That's what a man with a haircut does. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, and then, I mean, by that time, I split up with Ju Judy anyway. Uh, you know, we finished. Final. <laughs> We're always finishing. I know. Silly little kids, really, I suppose. <laughs> um, don't think it's any different from kids nowadays. Where did you find the capital to set yourself up in business? I didn't. I went out and done one job. I ploughed all the money back into it, brought more stuff, and done another job, and built it up that way. Um, this was doing what? Doing electrical work, anything. People's electrical. homes? Yes, anything. Mm -hmm. You know, motor, you know, uh, industrial or domestic, mm -hmm. whatever. 
And then, uh, after a couple of years, I then got married. <sighs> yes. Quite quick, wasn't it? <laughs> a couple of years later. No, I, I thought I met the right one. Um, Was it? As it turned out, no. But that probably um, pressure work as well. Because I got married and moved up to Nottingham the uh, same day. Really? Yes. <laughs> I changed everything. I thought, well, I'll never change, so I went the whole hog. <laughs> um, I was working like 24 hours a day. What was going to work every day, then being called out. And all I was doing was going, getting home, sitting down to have my dinner before I took a mouthful, phone to go, had to go back again, then come back, the same thing. It'd be about three hours a time, all the way through all the night, day in, day out, year in, year out, you know. So I was never at home. So and the marriage failed. Yeah. Did you have any children? Yes, I've got two. Really? <laughs> yes. Uh, Lee and Vicky. Lee's 14 and Vicky's 12. During the film, you were quite harsh on your father and your mother. Looking back, do you think you were perhaps <coughs> a little overcritical? Uh, with me mum, yes. I mean, she was doing her best. Yeah, God bless her. Is she dead now? Yes, yes, she died uh, about eight years ago, nine years ago. But with me dad, he was... Well... Sod. <laughs> you know, he just um, his way of settling the argument. Um, he used to have this rubber truncheon, and he used to sort of bend it and put it against your throat and say, "One of these days, I'm gonna let you have this," and let it go. And he used to hit you in the throat, and you know, straight down. And then his old walking stick with that handle. He's ever so quick with that. <laughs> Couldn't get out of the way of that one. <laughs> um, were you there when he died? I was there the day before, and then he got rushed into hospital again and, and died. And you were at the funeral? Yes, I went there, yeah. Did you mourn him? Yeah, I, I suppose I did in a way, but not... Um, there's no tear shed or anything like that, you know. Um, for me, my mum is different, you know what I mean? But, because we were, we were quite close, really. But with me dad, no. There were many in the audience who wrote to complain, saying, why was I making a film about no-hopers and deadbeats and possibly rebels? What would you say to them now? Well, I was going to go like that <laughs> to them. <laughs> um, I think I've done all right. And even at the time uh, it came over the film, that... There was like insurance clerks, um, there's electricians, plumbers, bricklayers, carpenters. Uh, and there was one guy there, and he was um, a scientist in the RAE. Uh, he was one of the older man of boys, you know. Um, so they, you can't really call them no hopers. Listening to some of the lads in that film, uh, they did seem terribly restrained, and yet at the time they were regarded as the absolute dregs and desperate people who were trying to bring down society. Yeah. <laughs> um, How do you look on them now? Well, now they must come over as quite normal sort of people. I mean, you've got your punks and all the rest of the people going about nowadays. Um, this really paved the way for them. Um, they, are, they are quite tame. A lot of it was what the media said. So you had, a, like, a reputation to live up to. You said they were very tame. Have you um, pulled away slightly from being one of them? No, I don't think I have. Um, so you were quite tame in those days? Compared to what they're like nowadays, yes. Hmm. I think so. You said, when I go and see a client, I get my hair cut. It sounds a far cry from slagging off the police and driving a ton at midnight. What do you now do? I still slag the police off and... without, you know, <laughs> having them waiting for me when I get back. <laughs> yes, I do the other as well, you know. <laughs> Slagging the police off because you think they gave you as a youngster a hard time? Oh, definite, yes. Uh, but I think they've got a lot worse than they were then. Um, I, th I think... 
even though they gave us a hard time and they stopped us uh, if there's more than, well, say a dozen bikes going into a town, they did set up roadblocks. And <clears throat> I mean, I was banned from Aldershot, my hometown. I wasn't allowed to go to Aldershot on my motorbike. I could walk in, catch the bus, you know, train, whatever, but I could not go on my bike. It didn't last very long, of course, you know, but <laughs> they turned us all away, uh, which I thought was a bit silly, seeing that I lived in the place, you know. But um, Are you saying they do that today or that they no, do worse things today? What, what they did then is that they gave, gave you a good telling off. Um, they picked on you, they stopped you, they harassed you. But eight times out of ten, that's all that happened. You had the odd one, they gave you a clout round the ear But that's better than losing your licence. <laughs> um, maybe if they'd done it to some of the youngsters nowadays, it might do some good, instead of just taking the court and wasting court's time and everybody else's time. Do you disapprove of the young today? I do when it comes to the knives, the drugs. Um, we went to a punch-up, we had a punch-up, you know, it's this. Um, nowadays, it's anything they can get hold of, whether it's, you know, iron bars, bricks, um, knives, and all the rest of the fancy weapons they get. Some of the remarks were quite political, though, weren't they? Were you political? No, because... Uh, I think my basic thing is that I just wanted to be left alone to be to live my own life uh, the way I wanted to, as long as I didn't hurt anybody else. Um, and I minded my own business. And I, I just think that other people should do the same and treat me the same. Was your fight perhaps more with your father than with society? <laughs> I think a lot of it was to do with that, yes. <laughs> was the title fair to you? Tony Rebel Rocker? Uh, I, I could never understand the Rebel Rocker. Um, I didn't know why you called it that, whether it was um, rockers being rebel or was I sort of being a rebel type of rocker. <laughs> I, I think it was probably just a good title and we were doing exactly yeah. what the press does <laughs> and wind you all up and make you out to be a bunch of yeah. heathens and it was good for selling bums on seats. Yeah. <laughs> because in fact you're not a rebel, are you? And today, you're probably quite a conformist. Yes, I think, I think to... I suppose to a lot of standards, I am. During the, the past 20 years, have you ever voted? I know I was, I was going to vote once, and I had all the people come round. And I had my own business at the time. And I, I just said to all the candidates, I said, look, the first one who comes back with a job, I'll vote for them. And... One did, but I didn't vote anyway. <laughs> because it was something like National Front or something which I wasn't going to vote for, <laughs> you know. Um, I mean, I am a, like, um, a conservative sort of, I mean, my views, I mean, I'm all for Maggie, funny enough. Um, Why funnily enough? Most people I talk to, they're criticising about the work, the things she does and everything else, you know. Um, but she's got a, I mean, she stands up, for, up to, to people which I like. I mean, she's the only one. It's a shame she's a woman, really. You know. No, I mean, well, it is. Why? Well, I mean, it's... You're not a sexist pig, are you? No, we're just making out all these other blokes being such pillocks. All the, you know, the other ones, all these blokes. That, yeah, I mean, there's, there's just wimps, all of them. And we've got Maggie there, and she's more macho than a lot of them. <laughs> when we talked 20 years ago, you had very little respect for suit and ties. In fact, you had very little respect for anything. <laughs> What's this new Tony Cripps all about? I don't wear a suit all the time. Um, I still wear jeans and that, and I've still got a leather jacket. <laughs> um, when... Yeah, you, you're going around to do a job, um, meeting a customer for the first time, uh, it does make a difference. If I went there wearing the same clothes I wore there, I, I mean, I wouldn't get the job. I mean, you can see if, if I'm putting a burger alarm installation in either in a factory or some mansion or something, um, they don't want the people, they think that I'm the sort of person who's coming to put it in, they're trying to keep out. 
you know. So <laughs> uh, I, I can't blame him for that, I suppose. Um, but it's it's a shame in a way because I mean a lot of people who are very creative or very good at what they do, and they're still getting judged on appearances instead of viability. Your ambitions were to be happy and have a full life. Has that happened for you? Yes, uh, I'm happy um, most of the time. I mean, I've got a few business problems, of course, you know, and as at the moment it's like 24 hours a day anyway. Um, but yes, I'm, I'm generally happy. Um, things are turning out right. Is happiness akin to having money? Oh, no. no. Money's um, never really bothered me. No um, sort of visions of being a millionaire, uh, you know. Um, but I don't really want to be one, funny enough. <laughs> now, you and your wife are split. Do you have anyone else in your life? Yes, I've got Julie. Very nice girl. Uh, we're living together now. Uh, I've known Julie for quite some time. Um, and we get on all right, you know. Is she a motorbiker? No, I don't think she'd like to go on the back of the bike with me. <laughs> <laughs> Especially after seeing the film. 